Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name's Steve, and if resin 3D printing isn't an option for you for whatever reason, but you still wanna make cool stuff with your FDM machine, then stick around, because in this video, I'll show you how I made this incredible Spider-Man bust using my Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer. Let's dive in and get crafting. First thing we're going to need is the bust file. I'm going to use this one from Winblat 3D. It's a free file on printables and I'll leave the link below. My strategy to getting good prints is usually a mix of research and trial and error. But don't worry, I've done all the experimenting for you. So sit back, follow along and reap the benefits. All right, let's get started. I've loaded up the file in my slicer, Bamboo Studio. This bus comes in three parts, the head, torso and base. First thing we're going to have to deal with is this non-manifold edges. So if we click there, repair that on the torso. The next thing we need to do is make this bust bigger because it's looking a little bit too small and FDM printers aren't great with small models and details. So let's double the size. I'm thinking if we put it at 200, also, we're going to be painting this model later, so it being bigger is going to help us out. So now we need to make sure that they're printed out in the correct orientation, because even though the model will probably print out okay, but it's going to need a ton of support on this section here. And we want to try and keep our model as support free as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it flat like that and this one I'm going to lay that like that and then here I'm going to do it like that. Next let's talk about quality. I start by choosing my layer height which is going to be 0, 1, 2 millimeters, a high quality default profile on the bamboo slicer. So I normally leave all this alone once i've selected it i normally don't do anything to it seam position is aligned that's, that's fantastic so the only thing we do need to worry about in the quality tab here is this seam so what i normally do is i slice it so the seam is up here and along here which is fantastic and it's in there which is also fantastic and it's also along here which is great so the next thing we're going to need to go to is the strength i normally leave all this as is and go eight percent on the infill and turn it to grid and then next is the speed leave all this default i want to change this to 50 and then I want to change that to 50 as well. And then all the others leave completely alone. And then support. All right, so now we need to enable the supports, keep it on normal, default. Let's go to snug. You can read what the snug support does there. Turn that to 10. And then on build plate only. And then the other tab, I normally put uh, outer brim only and then slice. So now that our model has been sliced, I just inspect the model and I see all these supports here. They are not going to be needed. So what you do to get rid of them is you go into prepare and you then go to support painting. And you see all these red dashes and parts there that's where it says it needs support but it doesn't need support trust me it's fine so get our brush whack it up then paint all this in so there we go all the supports are removed the ones i am going to keep is the two on the side here I tried getting rid of this one before, it's not a big deal, uh, but it won't go away. So, now, what I would do is go here and 
press simplify model. So then at the moment our detail level is medium. Whack that all the way up to extra high and then press apply. So now I'm going to do that for the other two pieces. And there we go. The other thing you can look at as well is variable layer height. So click on your model and then you want to bring this, if you want quality, bring this all the way over to the left. And then you want to then press adaptive and then this will give you a chart on the side here where your model, how your model is going to print. So at the start it's going to do 0.2 and then you're going to do 0.8 pretty much all the way up and then it's going to do a 0.28 for the rest of it and we don't want that at the top that's where you get this nasty bit so what i then do is press smooth smooth and just keep clicking it until it looks good 0.16 yeah and that looks good to me so now that's what I do on all the other pieces press the model press adaptive and then you see here we don't want this this is going to start at 0, 0 0.2 and then go to 0 0.28 and then it will do 0 0.08 and then it will go back to 0 0.28 so we don't want that so what I do is what I did before and just smash that smooth button and that's good enough then do the same to this dude oh press adaptive and then press the smooth button and that'll do what we're gonna have to do next is come out of this menu and slice this because there is not going to be enough supports generated on the bottom of this head on the neck area want to know how i know this check this out so what we got to do is bring it all the way down so you see this area here this is not going to print properly so this part here is going to try and print in midair and just there's not going to be anything there so you're going to have that resulting mess that i just showed you and yeah it's not it, you're going to have to start again it's not going to be a fun time for anyone so what we need to do is we need to go into support painting and need to come down to this underside here select the film tool and then basically just coat all this in blue and then you can even coat in here and, in, and press all these you know so we need this area like properly covered and then once we've done that we then go back up to slice and there you go that is now got a properly supported structure so it can nicely just build up the layers connect lovely and there you go not gonna have problems with this we can get rid of these supports if you want to i've kept them on because they're really not going to hinder the performance and they break off easily enough so that's not a problem there So now that all the pieces have been printed out, 
Look how good this print looks. I think this is my best print so far. I'm blown away with the level of detail and overall quality. Just look how smooth this thing is now. Right, now it's time to remove the supports, which should come off easy enough. To get rid of all these loose bits and scraggly ends, you can easily run 120 grit sandpaper over this and they will clean up really nicely. As I said when we were slicing this model, these supports on the side of the head broke away with no trouble and the extra supports we added on the bottom of the head were a little harder to remove so I had to get my trusty pliers and in the end they pulled away nicely and left us with a nice clean area. This base needed no support and turned out absolutely amazing. The flat surfaces come out perfectly and I cannot ask for a better print. Once I removed all the supports, I gave all the pieces a quick test fit to make sure there were no problems so that we could move on with the rest of the process. And this already looks amazing. And this is just the raw print. I am blown away by how good this looks already. This might be my smoothest print yet, but I know I can't get away with not sanding. So I get my 120 grit sanding sponge and lightly go over the model, because the better you prepare the model at this stage, the better your paint job will be when it comes to paint and you will kick yourself later if you don't put in the work now. To make sure there is no place that hasn't had some attention I use various metal files to get in between the lines on Spider-Man's outfit. And what keeps me going when I'm doing something like this is thinking it is worth it in the end. But my god is it boring and time consuming when you're doing it. Once you are done with your 120 grit sanding phase, the whole model needs to be cleared off of loose material before priming. I just use this soft makeup brush which does the job. To prime the pieces, I use this filler primer. When that is dry, I repeat the whole process again with 220 grit sandpaper or sanding sponge. I also use these sanding twigs to get right in the tight areas and then another coat of filler primer and then it's 320 grit sandpaper and repeat the whole process again. Then the last coat of filler primer, then use 400 grit sandpaper, then you should be left with a super smooth surface ready for paint. Once you have done all the sanding, I attach the head with super glue and then use this big boy plastic filler to fill in the gap where the head connects to the body. If you got this far into the project, 
and thought the sanding phase was time consuming, then buckle in because painting these lines on this model took me over a day and a half to do. And it was one of the most time consuming projects that I've done to date. So to paint in the lines, I used a double zero brush and made sure that I used a wet palette as well because you're gonna be sitting there for quite a long time. So I would suggest getting a snack, maybe a drink, putting some background music on and just, you know, you're gonna be there a while. Then once I'd done all the lines, I then moved on to doing the eyes uh, and putting the black around the eyes and then I did the spiders both front and back there's the back one and then there's the front one these weren't so time consuming but they still took a while to do and then after that I then moved on to the white is something I always struggle with because it doesn't cover very well so you have to go over it a couple of times to get that nice smooth finish and it, it, it's one of them processes where you put the first coat on you're like oh that's shit you put the second coat on you're like yeah it's still still pretty bad and then the third coat you're like oh it's getting there now and then wait for it to dry and then decide if you think you need another coat because trying to decide if you need another coat when it's wet doesn't always work out because I've done it before and then you just like, it's still not covering, it's still not covering. You just need to let it dry, be patient and then move on and get to that point where you're like, oh no, it's okay now because it's dried. Uh, so that's the process I normally go through. Once you're finished doing all the line work, all the eyes, all the details, the spiders, everything, you then have a beautifully stunning bust of Spider-Man to display on your shelf and admire and be in awe of. Get your friends to come around and look at it, send them pictures, say, look how much work I've done. And they'll probably look at it and be like, hey, that's cool. So it's, uh, it's something that you can appreciate, but then also hopefully everyone on the channel can appreciate as well. So there you have it. You can achieve amazing results with your FDM 3D printer. Resin may be better for busts, but still, if you can't use it for whatever reason, there you go. That's the process that I would use to go about making a bust like this. Thanks very much for joining me on this 3D printing project. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and show that bell icon some love so you can stay up to date with my latest projects. Comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos and happy printing and I'll see you in the next one.